Hello everyone and welcome back to my transgalactic trek in Elite Dangerous and I'm coming to you in post-commentary mode this time because I wanted to expedite things a little bit. A uh, commenter named Blaine Crichton decided to recommend a system for us as our next target, uh, HD168917. And that particular system is well into the galaxy, about 570 light years further in than we are right now, so I decided it was a pretty good target, a little bit more than 600 light years in distance from where we're starting out here. So that's our ultimate target for this episode, and along the way I did end up doing some exploring, even though I intended to just plunge ahead as quickly as possible, and the time it took is part of the reason why I'm doing post-commentary. I'm going to cut out a lot of stuff and the actual time it took to record this is about two hours. So a little bit of lag. I was recording this on Sunday and everything was quite busy but I think it was only initial lag there. So I tried to do things a little bit quickly, do some... At this point I was still trying to uh, go quickly, not uh, exploring much, but ultimately as I went along I did more and more exploring as you'll soon see. So, here just uh, moving right along. As we continue with this sort of uh, diary of events, I'll probably skip some systems, but not in this episode. In this episode, I'll, I'll show all the systems we end up hitting. So I am interested in seeing whether things are explored along the way, because of course we're trying to get into areas that are not explored yet, not discovered. But at this point, we're still dealing with stars that are pretty mild. If I aimed for an A-type or B-type star right now, I think it would have been discovered already. So here's another probably red dwarf of some kind, and not really very interesting. I still give it a ping and still get credit for, you know, doing what I can with it. But there's no planets around it, so I move along. And here's probably another red dwarf. A lot of dwarfs early on on this journey and so eventually I'm gonna get frustrated by the fact that we're just hitting low-class stars and try and aim for something better instead of what we've got. But this one at least had some pings. But what kind of pings? Mostly asteroids. Just one planet there. So I just move along. Like I said, not really in exploring mode just yet. This one is a brighter star, probably K-type. Let's see. Ah, uh, this one's already- oh, it's G-type, and it's already been discovered. So even G-types have already been discovered here, so we have to get going. Really, we want space where even B-types have not been discovered yet. Okay, well, this isn't anything particularly special. But if it has a special planet around it, that would be something. 16 new objects, and of what sort are they? Well, there's some planets there. Could be worth spending some time around here. So I do decide to do some exploring around them. So I get the data, and of course uh, getting the credits, which is very important. So I got the the system except for the asteroids all discovered. Unless you guys prefer otherwise, I'm probably going to keep doing post-commentary on Elite Dangerous. It's not like a Kerbal Space Program where unexpected things can happen. At least not with me exploring like this. It's not uh, like things can randomly explode the way they do in Kerbal Space Program, or I might accidentally forget solar panels, which is why I do 
uh, live commentary in Kerbal Space Program. I think this will move a little bit quicker if I continue doing post commentary. Okay, I'm looking at the map, so I'm guessing this is the point where I start getting frustrated by the lack of decent stars. So just taking a look, but it's still plugged away with our our current path because I couldn't find anything particularly interesting nearby. But it's just lackluster stars here. Oh, one new object. It is just one lonely planet there. I should point out that uh, I do do fuel scooping in uh, around practically every star. I don't usually top it off, but uh, here I I needed to get a little bit more. But I'm mostly gonna cut out the fuel scooping bits for obvious reasons. Okay, another. M type probably? Maybe K type? Maybe K type. A little bit late on the scanning there. Oh, M type. Another star with a single planet. There could be more planets, of course, but. Uh, but I was about to skip this particular planet, but then I noticed it was like right next to the next star. So since it was right there, I decided to divert to it. And I decided to explore it after all, even though I was trying to go as quickly as possible. So we got that star and then we proceeded on to our next target. Lots of the same thing, though different system now. I, I don't know if I should pronounce that as a single word or just uh, say S W O I W N S. It could be Swowins. I guess we could call it Swowins. Well, nothing but asteroids there, so on to Swowins. Ah, this is a purple star. At least uh, something different for once. Anything around it? When it comes to these purple ones, it's just ice planets around it, if anything. Uh, nothing. Oh well. We'll see plenty of those purple ones. This is a brighter star. Again, for this episode, I am going through each system and showing you my route, as it were, and uh, doing a full log of things. It might be that in the future episodes, as we continue along, I'll only highlight the systems where I do full ex exploration of them, and instead uh, skip any system that I decide to just uh, gloss over. So, a new system up next, Prue. Prue... I, I'm just gonna call this one Prue. And our ping shows four new objects. And are they planets? Yes, they are. But I'm interested in finding something a little bit better. So I see some A types there. And I decide to aim for one of them instead of going with my current path, which will just lead me to a bunch of other boring stars. Okay, but we have to hit this one along the way. Definitely a red dwarf. And when we take a look at the configuration of the system, we see that it is a binary pair to two planets, and so I decided to go ahead and discover them because it was convenient to do so. And then on to HD 
which is an A-type star, as you can see. A white star. Does it have anything around it? Anything else we should discover? Well, at least one thing. But more importantly, has it been discovered before? Yes, it has. Yes, it has. By Deadeye, I'll say. Deadeye underscore DK. So, yeah, we're still in territory where the good stars have all been taken. And, in fact, this one has been completely discovered. So, once again, looking for another interesting star. And then I see that. HD168137, which is my very first O-type star. Not too far off, either. So, um... Oh, but there's uh that's an interesting system. I'm go go back, go back, come on. Uh Hibarcus eight nine seven four three, which is three B type stars, three B zeros. So that tempts me. I decided to go for that first. And then I'll head for the O type star. Now, these stars have definitely been discovered before. After all, they're a B type and O type if even an A type has been discovered. We can be sure that the B types and O types have uh, been covered in this territory. So I just go ahead and, uh, well, I'll still get the cash for it, so that's okay. But. but yeah, five new objects here. And since I know good stuff is coming up, I do take a look, and if there was plants there, I might have looked at them, but asteroids, I don't care so much. So this is a system with three B-type stars, and this is the core one. I do my little directional scanner. was about to go to the system map before doing that, which had been useless. Okay, now system map. Okay, so what do we got? Oh, it's already been discovered. Well, yes, I expected that. But a lot of Titori stars, which could end up being full-fledged stars, could end up just being gas giants. They're sort of in the process of formation. So we've got a bunch of those here. Unfortunately, all discovered. Ixar Spire there. Uh, and those are other two. There's also a little uh, Titori uh, orbiting those two. Okay. Well, with it all discovered... I'm uh, more interested in the O-type star right now, so even though I do end up looking at this t -Tori one quickly and doing some fuel scooping, I end up deciding just to leave it at that and proceeding on to the O-type because I'm sort of excited to see what, that's, what that looks like and how that is. So, on to that system, the main novelty. And this is an O-type star. It doesn't look too bright just yet, but it sort of suddenly turns on like that. I'm not too sure about that effect, but I guess the light just sort of suddenly hit us. Alright. One thing around it. There's got to be more than one thing around it. Let's take a look. Well, this huge O-type star won't last very long. But it'll burn very bright. Of course, already discovered by Destructionist. And lots of stars around it. Lots and lots of stars orbiting this O-type star. They're all going to get destroyed by a supernova pretty soon. I mean, in, in galactic terms. But uh, yeah, and the t Tauri stars and everything. One little tiny planet inside there. Quite a lot of stuff going on in this system. I decided to start exploring, but... Again, the whole idea that this has already been explored by somebody else sort of robs it of its interesting... sort of robs me of any interest in it. And we do have another destination, the HD168917, of course our initial destination. So, after having diverted to the system with three B-type stars and this O system, I decided to aim back on track for our intended destination. We are currently uh, more than halfway through, we are now only 250 or so light years away. Three, two, 
Oh, well, this is a decent looking star. This isn't too bad. There's a G-type probably. So, has it been discovered? Twelve things around it. Let's see. Asteroids, mostly. Oh, is it an F-type? It was an F-type. Okay, that's good. This must be another F-type. Come on, get those scans going. Okay, three items. Has it been discovered? No. So we're sort of clear on the F-types. Uh, maybe we're in better territory for making discoveries. F-type is pretty good stuff. Not, not great, but it's a start. So I do take care of the planets in this system. I take care of the binary pair there first and I continue on to that third planet. Of course, I, I'm only covering the planets that I know of based on the basic discovery scanner. There might be planets further out that I'm not taking a look at. Plenty left to discover. If uh, you happen to pass by these systems again, there's every chance you'll discover more than I do if you have a better scanner than I do. Okay, still in the Prue system. A red dwarf. And it's just a bunch of asteroids around it. So, on to the next thing. Swowins again. Ah, oh, this is a nice looking star. High A type or a B type. Ah, no stuff around it though. What about stars? Ooh, plenty of stars. Ah, been discovered. Jastlin. Jastlin. But, but there's that one B-type there that has not been explored. And that gets me interested. Why, why leave off that one B-type? Was it so hard to find? Well, anyway, three B-types and an A-type. So I decide to uh, ping these stars. I, I see a likely spot for the binary pair, which is the B-type and A-type, which are together. I'll, I go to the system map to see where exactly they are. Uh, they're there, you see. But they're close to the center star, so they're obviously much easier. The, the one that wasn't discovered is further out. So it'll be difficult to spot. Actually, this binary pair looks very, very good. I mean, you can take a look. They're very tight, tightly packed to each other. Interesting twins. I had to get pretty close there. I got the scan going. Sort of captivating, this particular site. You can see their tight orbits around each other. Didn't check the period of these orbits. I wonder what, what it's like. Okay, but then I spent a long time, actually quite a chunk of the two hours I spent uh, during this episode was just trying to find that extra B-type star. Obviously I recorded this on the weekend when I had the time. But uh, yeah, I didn't have any luck looking for any sort of star that might be moving with respect to the background, um, trying different angles, but ultimately I had to proceed. I could not find that star either. So uh, definitely not any better at this than my predecessor. Okay, at this point I was feeling like I was getting close to my target. Obviously have done some discovery along the way. And with 10 new astronomical objects, maybe I'll be hanging around here for a bit? I doubt it though. Ah, uh, just asteroids. Yeah. 
Okay, well, a G-type star, very nice. A lot nicer than, say, a dim red dwarf. Actually, this is probably like a Y or something. What, what kind is this? L, maybe? What are you? You're an L. You're an L with two... All these dim stars have pink ice planets around them. I decide to go ahead and scan those ice planets. Icy planets. And then proceed. Oh, this one looks a lot better. G or F, maybe? Maybe G. I'm trying to guess just by looking at it. I don't remember all of them. Seven new objects. G, yes. Uh, two planets. And I decide to go ahead and scan those two. I always leave the asteroids, by the way. I, I don't scan the asteroids. Okay, got those two, so on we go. Around this point I start seeing a lot of these dim stars which can barely bake a pizza kind of thing. So yeah, even though I discover six new astronomical objects, I don't think I bother scanning them. Let's see, what uh, what do we have here? Uh, two pink planets and another star, but yeah, not worthwhile hanging around. We're on to, we're on to the next system, which uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'll go with Blea Aeon? Eon? Blea Eon. I think I'll call it Blea Eon. I don't know how to pronounce it otherwise. Okay, three new objects, but again, one of these dim stars which will make its planets pink. Yes, three pink planets in a row, all tiny, barely series style. Oh, as if that one wasn't dim enough, this one's even worse. This is probably a Y type, yeah. Barely, barely more emissive than Jupiter. And it's all alone, not even a pink planet to accompany it. So I, I check how far away we are. Turns out we are not very far away at all. We're just uh, this jump, which is another dim planet. This is just like a long chain of dim planets on the way to this system. So at this point, I'm really hoping this system is something special because I haven't seen anything decent in a while. But I ping this one anyway. I do my basic discovery duties. I see that it has a planet with a moon around it. And since that's a very convenient thing to check out, I aim for it. So I take care of this planet and its moon, even though they're tiny little pink ice planets anyway. Sort of a delay of gratification thing, honestly. Since I know that the next jump is going to take me to my destination, I went ahead and said, Okay, well, let's take care of this properly. Okay, but then on to our target. So here we go. I made it. HD 168917. Didn't get as far into the galaxy in this episode as I was originally aiming for when I decided at the end of the episode, last episode, to plunge ahead quickly. And that's because I did a little bit more attempt at discovery along the way than I had originally planned. And that was because I had this suggestion. So I take a look. What's so good about the system? Well, uh, that star has already been discovered by somebody else. But then there's a lot of stuff that hasn't been has not been discovered by anybody else. There are these T Tauri type stars. There's a big T Tauri. That's probably gonna end up like a really big star there. 
But uh, there's also a tiny little planet that's really close in that hasn't been discovered, and I wonder why. Maybe the person that had passed by here before hasn't gotten back to civilized space yet? Don't know. First, first of all, business is filling up, though. So I do do that here. And then I head out. Uh, this is the one that has been discovered, I believe. Yes, a high metal content planet. This is the one that has not been discovered yet. Another high metal content planet. Lots of high metal content planets. And then I have to figure out... I take a look at the information by it. Pretty high on the atmosphere is there. But uh, yeah, then I head out and try and find the Titori stars that have not been discovered. I see that little red dot there, purple dot. And that's a very likely target. That's probably a Titori star there. But then I see some transients off to the side. And uh, those end up catching my eye, especially since there's a gravitational effect. You see them there. So what are they? Well, you saw the huge gap between the two planets close into the star and the Titori-type stars far out. And sure enough, there are planets in between. So that's what I've got here, but I need to slow down carefully and not accidentally ram into one. So giving a ping, I discover three new planets here. Check these two out. Pretty dull planets considering their stars so bright. More high metal content planets. And then there's that gas giant that we passed by so quickly and didn't slow down for. So I give that a ping. It's an interesting looking gas giant. It's got uh, nice decent white clouds. Seems a bit purplish. So taking a look at that. Yeah, purplish with, uh, well let's call it light purple clouds. Very interesting standard hydrogen helium mix there. Not that big, I think. But anyway. Uh, so around here, I will actually call an episode. I'm going to park my ship here and then continue on with the Titori type stars at the beginning of the next episode. And then we'll continue on further into the galaxy. I've actually already recorded the next episode, so I know what happens. And there is something special in it, so don't worry. But anyway, uh, here we are. I'll just leave it here, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And with this, I will see you next time.